Have you ever achieved something that you felt as though you didn't really deserve? Like being voted MVP on your sports team, or winning an award for an art assignment you did, or even something as simple as getting a good grade. In the moment, you were ecstatic and overjoyed. But as time went on, you began to think, did I really deserve this? You become suspicious of everything, thinking maybe it was a joke and you're the only one missing out on it. Or you become so paranoid that you hide behind a mask in fear of someone realizing that you are indeed a fraud? If so, this is a common phenomenon known as the imposter effect, and that you're not alone in this feeling. Far too many of us have similar experiences to this, whether at school, at work, on the field, in the orchestra, etc. We're here to let you know about this phenomenon, so that you may be able to recognize it and overlook it in the future. In 1978, Two psychologists, Suzanne Imes, Ph.D., and Pauline Rose Clance, Ph.D., observed this trait among high-achieving women who questioned their intelligence, and thus were unable to accept their success. According to Clance and Imes, there are four behaviors that start the snowball effect of the imposter syndrome, preventing belief in one's own abilities and accomplishments. 1. The first behavior involves diligence and hard work. Although these are common traits of any persevering individual, the person suffering from the imposter syndrome works tirelessly out of fear that they will be discovered as a fraud. So they try to catch up to the intellect they think people view them as, never getting there. Thus, a vicious cycle begins with fear of being discovered as a faker, leads to overworking, and hard work leading to temporary approval from superiors, which the person is subject to not believe. And then it repeats all over again. 2. The second behavior focuses on having a sense of phoniness. This is what's meant by saying they wear a mask. They don't talk about their true feelings or ideas, but rather say what they believe their superiors or classmates want to hear, or expect them to say. The person who is suffering from this syndrome will support another person's ideas and downplay their own abilities. This allows the imposter to believe that no one can critique them or dislike them because they're so supportive and agreeable. 3. The third behavior involves using charm and perceptiveness to gain favor of their superiors. The imposter wants to be recognized by their professors or coaches as a star pupil, so they tie that mask on tighter and try to win over their hearts. This person wants to gain the support and reassurance of their abilities from the superior, in hopes that it will help her gain her confidence in her own abilities beneath the mask. Unfortunately, after the imposter receives their validation, she may begin to question her abilities, thinking that the validation was given because of her charm and good acting skills, and not her intellect. Thus, a vicious cycle of seeking reassurance from different superiors leaves the imposter unsure of her own abilities and talents. 4. The fourth behavior is the imposter avoiding to display confidence. Modesty is the best policy is a true mantra for an imposter. If the person suffering from this syndrome avoids showing confidence, no one can challenge them on their intellect or ideas, because they never go out of their way to announce them. Avoiding conflict and confrontation is key in this situation, because the imposter fears that if they show any bit of confidence in their ideas or abilities, her peers will fight her on them and shun her for her ignorance. After all this, do you feel like you relate to the traits of the imposter in question? If so, then you've experienced imposter syndrome as well. You might be wondering this pressing question, can this be treated? Thankfully, the answer is yes. According to Clance and Imes, a multimodal therapy in which several therapeutic approaches are used concurrently seems most effective in altering the imposter belief in a client, as well as a group therapy setting or an interactional group in which there are other high-achieving women experiencing the imposter phenomenon is highly recommended. The group setting is extremely valuable because 1. Women feel more secure when they realize that they are not alone in dealing with the imposter phenomenon. And two, women have a chance to reflect when they hear another woman's story and the lack of reality in their rationale. This can be even broken down in this video. From watching this and hearing about the effect and relating it to yourself, you begin to realize that you're not alone in these feelings and others around you experience the same thoughts. By recognizing these imposter-esque feelings and pushing them aside, you can no longer be afraid of being exposed as a fake. You can be confident that you're not one. What do you think about the imposter effect? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to check out our other social media for more content. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.